Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to find optimum portfolio weights that will maximize the Sharp ratio for a three asset portfolio. The method can be used for a portfolio of any size. What we are going to do is to use some Excel functions to do the job for us. In a later video, we are also going to use the solver add-in in Excel to do the same thing for us. Let us get started by looking at some data here. We have three assets. These are three securities of these three companies, Homestake Mining, Kaiser Aluminum and Texas Instruments. Their excess return is given to us in this column. The variance is given to us in this column and the covariance between the assets are provided to us here. So the first thing that we need to do is to write the variance covariance matrix S. I have pre-filled the values here for you and we'll talk about them. This cell, cell 11 of this matrix gives us the variance of the first asset which is this. On the diagonal you will remember we have the variances. So in this cell we have the variance of the second asset which is this. On this cell we have the variance of the third asset which is this. On all other cells of this matrix are the various various covariances. This one is the covariance between asset 1 and asset 2 which is this value here. This in this cell is the covariance between asset 1 and 3 which is this cell here this value. This value here is again the covariance between assets 2 and 1 which is this value. This cell is the covariance between assets 2 and 3 which is this value 0.3. This cell is again the covariance between assets 3 and 1 which is this 0. And on this cell we have the covariance between assets 2 and 3 which is 0.3 this value here. So what we need to do next is to find out the inverse of the S matrix or the variance covariance matrix. If you look at this picture we are wanting to find the value of Z first. So we need to have S inverse and then we also need to have the vector for excess returns. The vector for excess returns is here but we need to figure out what is S inverse. So we can very easily do that in Excel. Because there are three assets and the variance covariance matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix, we are going to have a 3 by 3 S inverse matrix. So let us select a 3 by 3 region. Once we do that, we are going to use the M inverse function, keeping the selection active. We are going to now provide the array, which is this. Close brackets and hit Control, Shift and Enter all at the same time. So we have the S inverse matrix here now. What we need to do, according to our methodology, is to multiply the S inverse with the excess return matrix or vector. So we are going to do that in this space here. It's going to be a 3 by 1 vector. So we select this 3 by 1 space and we use the mmult function. Excel is now asking us to provide the two arrays for multiplication. What is the first array? The first array has to be the S inverse which is this. So we select that comma and then we want to provide the second array which is the excess return vector which is this close brackets 
and hit control shift and enter all at the same time so we have our z vector here this is z1 this is z2 and this is z3 we can write the value of total z here because we are going to need it when we find the individual weights so let us use the sum function to take a sum of all the z values these are our numbers so we select close brackets and hit enter my phone is ringing so I'm going to have to pause this video for a while take the call and come back to you in a moment all right guys so I'm done with my call so let us pick up pick the thread again so we had found out the total Z here and now we can very easily find out the individual weights for asset 1 2 and 3 let us do that in this column here in this cell we are going to find the weight for asset 1 the definition is here we looked at it in the previous video what we are going to do is to divide the zi by the sum of zi's so in this cell we are going to now pick up z1 which is this and divide by the sum of all z's which is this this gives us the weight on the first asset that we should invest 52.9 percent of our money in the first asset we can do the same thing for the remaining two cells as well we can drag down the formula but at the same time we want to ensure that the denominator doesn't change the sum of all z's should not change so we can make a slight adjustment here we can write a dollar sign on either side of the letter B and then we can drag the formula these are our portfolio weights let us see if they are correct we know that sum of all weights should equal 1 so let us take the sum of these weights and see if we got the right result we see that the total of all weights is equal to 1 so our results are correct they tell us that this is W1 the proportion of money to go to asset 1 this is W2 which is a negative weight that means the mechanism is asking us to short sell probably the second asset and this is W3 which tells us that we need to invest another 52.9 percent of our money in asset 3 let us now find out the expected return standard deviation and sharp ratio for finding the sharp ratio we need the excess return of the portfolio and we also need the standard deviation of the portfolio so in this cell here let us find out the excess return of the portfolio which is going to be equal to the weights multiplied by the return vector so we can use the sum product function also to do this so we write sum product and Excel is asking us for the arrays these are our weights so this is our first array and we also need the array for excess returns which is here so we can select that close brackets and hit enter so the excess return on the portfolio is going to be 18.12 percent let us find out the standard deviation of this portfolio since we didn't set up a bordered variance covariance matrix we are going to use the actual formula to find out the standard deviation I'm doing this so that you can see how to use the long formula as well so what we need to do we need to write down the first weight which is here 
and we have to square it. We have to multiply the square of the first weight with the variance of the first asset which is this. Then we need to add to it the product between the second weight squared. So let's square up the second weight and multiply this with the variance on the second asset which is in this cell here C4 plus we need to square up the third assets weight which is this so let's square it and multiply that with the variance of the third asset which is in cell C5 now we need to add two times W1 which is this times W2 which is this times the covariance between 1 and 2 let us see where the covariance between 1 and 2 is it's here in cell E3 so we select that plus 2 times W1 which is this times W3 which is this times the covariance between 1 and 3 which is here in this cell E4 plus 2 times the weight on the second asset multiplied by the weight on the third asset multiplied by the covariance between 2 and 3 where is the covariance between 2 and 3 it's here in cell E5 so we select that close the bracket if we leave it here we have the variance but because we want the standard deviation we are going to raise this to the power of 0 0.5 and hit enter so we have the standard deviation of the portfolio now 46.17 percent and we can very easily find out the sharp ratio by dividing the excess return of the portfolio by the standard deviation of the portfolio so this is the sharp ratio so given these weights the sharp ratio is going to be maximized and it's going to be equal to 0.3924. Hope this was helpful for you. See you next time.